Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a daisy. We're going to be doing this as a flower of the month series. And I'll be showing you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's man in chat today hey there, everybody. for our live show. And uh, so if you have questions, you can ask those while I'm painting and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so this is our reference photo here, and I um, we're going to be put, doing it on the little five-inch canvases. Um, so this is our fourth one that we did. The this was our first, second, third, and uh, so this will be our daisies. Will be for our April flower of the month. I'm using a five by five inch uh, gallery wrap canvas from Frederick. So thank you to them for providing our canvases for this series. Um, really fun little canvases and you can kind of set them up so you don't even have to frame them. They'll stand up on a shelf or you can hang them on your wall if you want to, whatever you want to do. All right, let's go over our colors really quick. I've got quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, titanium white, unbleached titanium, and then this is uh, acrylic glazing liquid. And then a few brushes. We'll be using a large flat for our background. So I've got a nar uh, large uh, number eight bright. Uh, from the 6100 series, Princeton. Princeton is our brush sponsor, so thank you to them. We've got uh, three eighths inch and quarter inch uh, Velvet Touch in their Velvet Touch line, which I really like. They're uh, kind of a Taclon, I think, bristle or something similar to that uh, synthetic. They really hold up very well, but they're kind of soft um, also. I've got a number one and a number three round, a number four Filbert, and then I've got a quarter inch Willow's Blender. So... If you don't have these exact brushes, um, that's fine. You can use, you know, whatever you've got that's similar to what I'm using. Um, same thing with the colors. Um, I've got all the materials listed down in the description of the video, um, as always. So if you, uh, if I went over those colors or anything too fast, you can go down there and find them in the description. You are screaming through that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on task today. Let's am, go. Let's I'm get feeling her it. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Yes. I might not get a chance. I'm not usually that organized, so I'm going to zoom in there, hun. Um, so we've been doing the backgrounds of these all in a different gray, so we kind of did a purpley gray. And, well, that's fine. Uh, purpley gray, more brownish gray. This was kind of a neutral, um, almost blue-toned gray. Uh, and then we're going to do, I, f I felt like a bluish gray would be good for this, so we'll use um, some blue tones in our gray for this one. So I'm going, let's go ahead and use the thalo blue. I usually use ultramarine blue when I'm making my grays, but I'm going to try the, the thalo blue and see how it does. It may be a little bit too teal, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know. So there's our uh, thalo blue and I've added burnt, burnt umber to it. And I'm going to grab a big dollop of white here. Ooh, that's kind of green. Look at that. Did not expect that. Nobody expects <laughs> green. That's pretty cool. Actually, I think I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and use that. And I'll add a little bit of ultramarine. Ooh, yeah, that's really pretty. And probably if I left a little bit more blue and less brown in there, it would have been a little bit more of the bluish tones. But um, I don't mind that. I think it's really pretty. And I think that'll be a good tone for our daisies. Behind our daisies. And we'll have a different gray for each one of these canvases. So... Gonna learn in different ways to mix grays as well as learning our little flowers and doing those kind of fun so i'm just using this brush i haven't like over mixed the color you can see how it's got a little bit of darker and lighter in there i did that deliberately so just don't kind of blend 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 just kind of leave it slightly blended and then you can use that variegation in your canvas here and just kind of Dab it on back and forth. I kind of do a little X strokes, some a little bit this way and then some a little bit that way and just kind of vary it up. That's good. I think I like that. I think that'll look interesting against these other colors too. Be a little bit different. All right, and then let's just go ahead and do the sides. While we've got this color out, I'm gonna add a little bit of water so that this paint goes a little bit farther. 
And get those sides painted. If I don't do it now, it will not be the same color if I try to mix this again. So might as well just do it while I've got it on here. So if you're new to our channel or new to this series or just stumbled upon us, we're so glad that you are watching with us today. We are do these shows twice a week live on YouTube. We do the live because I'm too lazy to edit. So <laughs> don't like editing mm -hmm. <laughs> so the live shows work out really good because <laughs> we can so you never know what you're going to get though so that's kind of the fun of it <laughs> we uh talk about all kinds of random us. stuff while i'm painting and um just take our time with it and have fun it's kind of a little party every week we, that's right with our friends people so. get to ask questions and like yeah. this one so okay while i'm out drying yeah you'll have to answer Okay. How do you keep the paint out of the ferrule? So don't answer uh, yet. We'll wait until I go out. But okay. we'll keep on talking. Well, I mean, sometimes it gets in there. But yeah, we do this twice a week. We do it live, like she said. We have fun. Yeah, we hope you'll subscribe and come back and join us again next time. Yeah. All right. Here, I'll give that to you. You can... So you can see I kind of did, well, the paint, the paint kind of seeped in there. It did It's not like caked up underneath there. You really don't want it to get up under the flat brushes, like your flat brush, your angle brush, those ones, because um, the paint can kind of, uh, it, it's really hard to clean it out um, from underneath there. So I just, as long as you don't press down too hard when you're mixing your colors, you won't get it down into the silver. So when I'm mixing my colors, I'm pressing, but I'm not pressing down so hard that the silver part is touching the the um, palette. And um, I think the tendency is to kind of, you know, really press it in there or get so much paint caked up on, on here. Um, when you're mixing, like mixing too much paint, that's a really common um, issue for beginners that you, you know, you can see how little paint I used there. I just use a little scoop of that and a little scoop of that, a little scoop of that, and... Um, so there's not that much paint. I think that um, a lot of times if you're um, you're mixing too much paint, then that's it's it's just going to get up there because you're you're doing that, you know. So if you've got a lot of paint to mix, and if and you see me use my palette knife at times to mix um, my colors with, so if I know I'm going to be using a lot of a color, a lot of times I'll grab my palette knife so that I don't have that issue of getting the paint up in here uh, when I'm mixing. So. It's just, um, yeah, hopefully that made sense. But with a round brush, you don't really have to worry about it because round brushes are intended for, um, at least as far as I understand. Now, of course, I've been, you know, whatever. But um, it, from what I understand, you're, the, the round brushes are okay to get the paint up there because um, they're kind of made for it to come out. They're not, um, they don't have the issues that the flat brushes have with the paint getting trapped up in there not as much at least you still want to clean your brushes really well and i use this as my white paper towel i always have a white paper towel and after i clean my brush out even though my brush might look clean um, if you press it on your paper towel you can see where there's still paint in there and um, just clean it out sometimes with brushes i will clean them two or three times before they come clean it never ever leave it um, even if you've cleaned it four times and it, you know, you're, you're just like, this should be clean. Um, if it is not coming clean on your paper towel, it is not clean. So um, that's why I always, always test on the paper towel and make sure it's completely clear before I let them dry. Because if you don't, then they'll kind of flare out. And uh, once that paint gets trapped in there, it's pretty much, once it's hardened, it's pretty much impossible to get it out. Okay, one more time on the your background color again. How'd you make that up? Thalo blue and ultramarine, uh, phthalo blue and burnt umber plus white. Excellent. Yeah. Continue. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead and zoom in there a little bit more there, hon. There we go. No, a little bit farther. There we go. All right. So our daisy is in a basket this time, which is kind of fun. A little bit different from our other ones. A little bit. So these will be this will be a little bit bigger than our other, and it's pretty much straight right in the middle here. So 
I'm going to do kind of a rounded handle, and this rounded handle is going to be covered by our daisies. But you do want the angle to be kind of right, so just kind of keep that in mind. I might make it a little bit bigger because I feel like this whole area up here is going to be wasted. Let me... I'm just using a watercolor pencil. This is a water soluble um, pencil. And um, it'll give me a little bit more. Well, I can erase it and that kind of thing. Okay, that's better. A little bit higher. And then our daisies are going to come out this way. All down in here and fill out over the top of our basket. Okay, I think that'll be about right. And then the bottom of this is rounded here. Okay, I think that'll be about all I need to do. Let me grab my dark, or um, my 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm going to get a little bit of color on there. I'm just going to use burnt umber here. And I'm going to fill in the basket area down here with the burnt umber. A dark color because we're going to be using lighter colors for our basket weave so we need a dark color underneath to contrast with that and I've been seeing several of these being painted the there's several people that have been doing this whole series with me, so this has been fun to see the different variations of. It's it's always fun as a as a teacher to see um, what you guys come up with and how you um, make these paintings your own and uh, your own style. Even even if it's you know even if it's not intentional, your style will just kind of come through in your art no matter what you do so it's not going to be exactly like mine and that's not supposed to I mean you know we want you to kind of um, I'm showing you kind of my techniques and things that I do but um, just like you know handwriting or anything else your your style is going to come through it's not going to be exactly like mine so if you're a beginner and you're you know just learning, kind of know that, know that you're kind of on a new journey. It may not be um, super easy at first, like any new skill. Like if I sat down to learn piano or something like that, learn to ski or whatever, <laughs> not that I would want to. took me an hour and a half to get down the bunny slope. I did that once and never went back. So, How about if you're trying to learn to ski while playing the piano? That would be even harder. You should be able to do that after the first try? After the first try, you should be a master exactly. at it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and your friends should ridicule you if you can't. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I just, uh, with art, if there's some sort of weird um, notion that, uh, it should just, if you don't have like quote talent for it, that, you know, uh, if you, if you can't do it, you know, perfectly on your first try, which is so not true. <laughs> it's just a, it's a, it's a learning process, just like any other process. And so kind of my job is just to sort of help you through and kind of hopefully give you some tips and make it a little bit easier than when I tried to learn on my own <laughs> for the most part, it was a very frustrating process. So. I hope that uh, we well, can make it a little bit more enjoyable. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this it. all the way down. Do it. But maybe not as dark back here. I don't want like a hard brown line having a cover. But if a little bit of it peeks through our flowers, it'll be there. Okay, so cute little basket shape there. Very easy. I'm going to go ahead and finish the basket first since it's going to be underneath our daisies. Um... So our next color, let's go ahead and grab some of the unbleached titanium, a little bit of yellow oxide, make kind of a basket or a tan color here. And I'm using a the number three round here. That's what I used at the top of the handle there too. I didn't mention that when I changed it out. 
And I'm going to do, this is very similar. We did a beehive. If you watched the beehive video that we did, this is kind of a similar technique. So we're going to do these long lines down for our little slats. And as we get down to the bottom, they're, they're slanting a little bit um, to the side, but they're not. They're almost, this one's almost coming straight down. So, like that. They kind of do a little bit of a spoke and then they kind of come this way. So they are kind of angled a little bit to the side. But, they're still, just because of the perspective, they're still kind of look like they're coming straight down right there. If that made any sense at all. all right, let me grab the little bit of the brown color and I'm just going to do kind of a diagonal stripe. I've got both colors on my brush here. I'm going to do a little diagonal stripe around the front there. And then let's do a little, get a little bit of that color, that brown. And just do a little diagonal stripe across the top. Got a little bit of both that brown and yellow color on there. There we go. Just gonna angle it across the top here. All the way around my basket. Going back in with a little bit of the brown. That I hope I was on camera there. I wasn't really paying attention. Yes, you were. I was good. Okay. There we go. And then let's do a little bit of the weaving across the bottom there. Couple, a couple rows of just diagonal lines. Kind of crisscross one another just a little bit. Overlapping slightly. And I try to kind of tuck them in around the corners there so that they kind of tuck around the sides of our basket. So then I'm going to make a color that's a little bit darker. A little bit more of a yellow brown and we're going to just pick pick one of these sides here I'm going to come outside the edge and wrap it around and leave a little bit of space in between each one of these and go almost to this line but not quite over it so just little lines and then go to the next section come just above it and do in between Zoom in a little bit more. I feel like it's a little farther away. I had to zoom out because you were starting to go off camera. Okay. I'll so try, I'll try to make keep it. Oops. The other zoom in the other direction. Okay. So right in between. And if this brush is too big or you're getting your lines too big, you can always switch to a smaller brush, smaller round. This one seems to be doing okay for me, so I'm going to stick with it. It's kind of fun. That's fun to say. <laughs> So, Baskets. if uh, people don't want to try to sketch this out themselves, 
Right. What do they do? Well, there is a website called Patreon.com where I have my traceables stored. I offer them for a dollar a month. And you print it out and then transfer it on with transfer paper onto your canvas and you're good to go. You don't have to... And I'll do it from the actual finished painting, so it'll be exactly kind of what I painted here. I'm gonna go finish that last little line there. There we go. Cute. And then we may let that dry, and we may um, add more shading to it if we want to make it even fancier later. But for now, we'll leave it. So let's go ahead and use the filbert brush here. And I'm going to use a little bit of green, my yellow oxide, and some of the brown. Burnt umber. And I'm not sure I'm going to use all these colors. I just kind of put out the colors. I don't do these ahead of time. Um, anymore. I was having tendonitis issues, so about a year ago we stopped doing the example paintings, and we've just, so we just do these live from the reference photos, so I try to guesstimate what colors I'll use, but sometimes I don't use, you know, all the same ones exactly that I had pl planned on it. In the middle of the painting process, sometimes I change my mind, or things go a little differently than I had thought it might. It's hard to no, exactly, unless I painted ahead of time. So I'm just doing a few little leaves here. I'm just tapping, using the edge of my brush. These these filbert brushes make it really easy to do leaves because all you basically have to do is set your brush down and pull, and you'll get that leaf shape. So and then we'll be using it for our daisies too. So I'm going to kind of fill in here, and then there's some bigger... Daisy's coming down over the top of our basket down here. Daisy leaves, I mean, should say. Right there. Okay. And right in here. So you can see why we did our basket first. So we won't have to worry about going over our basket. Let's use a little bit of white. Let's get the unbleached titanium, actually. A little bit of the yellow. Make a brighter or brighter green here. Do a little highlights on some of these leaves. And a lot of these are going to be in the background, so they're going to be dark. Yeah, but I'm just trying to kind of figure out where dark areas are in between my daisies and put a little bit of this color. There we go. Just notice the normal little spot here. I want to touch that up. a gray using my ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Leave it slightly more blue, so use a little bit more of the blue than the brown. I even add a little bit of that thalo blue since that's the color we used in our background just to tie it in. And then I'm going to leave that dark color there and add white over here. And I'm going to spray this and my other colors to keep them moist while I'm working. And you can see kind of also where I kind of offloaded that that brush was getting too much paint on it. So I kind of turned it so that I offloaded. Just kind of press it down and turn. Twist it. Get some of that color off of there. There we go. Okay. So 
So now we have kind of a blue, blue white. We'll be using this for our daisies for the first section of them. And I'm going to go up right in here and just start putting in my petals. And I'm just setting down the edge of the brush this time. The rounded tip just makes it really easy to do this. And I'm going to grab some of that darker gray for some of these in here. There we go. There's some back here that are hanging off the edge. So we're just seeing the side of it. There's some in front. We're just going to try to tuck as many in here as we can. So then this one is covered up by this petal, this flower that's sticking way out here. Use a little bit of that darker. And we'll be adding what bright white on top for our highlights, but we need this darker base, otherwise our daisies are just gonna look kind of flat. So this helps give us a little bit of depth to our white. White's never just white. It's always got all kinds of other colors that it's picking up because it's almost like a mirror. It's going to pick up all the colors around it. So we could put a little bit of the browns in here too, probably. There we go. Really fun. I, I did one, a mural one time on a wall that was just daisies and lilacs all the way across the top, kind of like a wallpaper border, almost. Super fun. And these actually pretty easy to, pretty easy to do once you get kind of the feel for them. There we go. So where they're overlapping, like the back ones here, I'm trying to kind of do a little bit more gray and then the top ones, I just added a little bit more white, but we'll make that even more obvious when we do our second layer on top of these. So I'm do a few little petals there. So one's way up here. I'm going to go ahead and put like a little bud right there coming up. Cover my spot that was in my canvas. <laughs> There's a little spot that the background didn't cover. So we'll just cover it up with the daisy. So what kind of paint were you using for the murals? Um, I would use uh, acrylic paint mixed with a little bit of house paint. So you just put use the latex as your base color. Usually I would use a color... Um, like white or, you know, something like that. I think I did, I don't think I did two layers on the daisies when I did them. I'm pretty sure I just did one layer of white. So they were just kind of done sort of more decorative painting style. They won't, weren't done kind of ultra realistically. Um, so I probably, I might have just used latex acrylic or latex paint for them. I, I don't remember. It's been, boy too many years. <laughs> that was Adriana Gocher's <laughs> bedroom when she was a little girl. So she was Nathan's age. Or she, so she's got her own kids now. So that tells you <laughs> anything. <laughs> it's, it's probably at least at least maybe 10 years old, 10 years ago, probably close to 10 years ago. Well, I was going to tell everybody that you've been painting for about 1,500 weeks. <laughs> A little bit more than that, but roughly. Is that about right? 
Yeah, 52 times 30 is mm, okay. 1560. So, yeah. About that. And then a little bit more than that. So, about almost probably just over 1600 weeks. Interesting. I mean, not constantly. I mean, she does stop to eat, to eat you know. Even though sometimes it doesn't Watch seem Project like it. Runway. <laughs> Turn the four-hour shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we go. I didn't fit in as many on this side as was in our reference photo, but I think that's close enough. Cute. So now I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt sienna. This is where I was thinking I might use the thalo or the Quinacridone magenta, just to give it a little bit more of a maroon flavor in our centers of our flowers right there. They're going to be yellow, but we're going to want kind of a color underneath because they're not just yellow. So we'll do a little bit of this color here. And don't worry if you're covering over your petals. You can always give them a second coat if you've covered up some of what you and painted in, already. And then one of these some shots. Some of these that are sideways are, are only like half moon shaped. In fact, this is a little bit bigger right there. What one? I'm going to use a smaller brush. This brush is too big for this. People want to see your ring when you get a moment to oh, pause. Yeah, isn't that cute? It's like little leather pieces. It's I don't know how they hardened it, but they shellacked it or something. It's little leather petals. Really cute. Very cute. I got that at Crystal Bridges. I don't know where else you can find them. <laughs> It'd be... I guess it would be smart if I had a place you could buy them. Okay. Um, there is a little one back in here, but I can, I'll go ahead and start it. It's covering up that petal, but we're going to put a petal over the top of it again. So, because it's barely peeking in there. Same thing with this one, it's barely peeking. And then... small brush I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this green here and use it to do a little stem on that little guy right there and I feel like I want some green down here even though it's not in our picture I feel like it'll balance it a little bit if I just do kind of a green leaf or two out here and up in here too. Just kind of pull those colors all out. There we go. So I thought I was going to use this brush for my centers of my flowers, but it's too big. So I could probably I have an eighth inch one if I can find it. There it is. So we use that. And I'll add a little bit of my center color, that dark background color to it yellow medium first and I'm just going to tap in here with a little bit of texture in the centers of my daisies leave a little bit of that dark color 
showing underneath and around the sides. Now, if you don't have this tiny little brush here, you could use a round brush and just dab in like I did for the center. So it's not necessary to have this, you know, special brush, but it is pretty handy. I used it for our leopard this weekend too. We did a leopard painting for our bonus video this month. And it came in really handy for some of the spots because they were so small. Um, so I used this brush here for some of that. This is the 8th inch Willow's Blender. Those Willow's Blenders are really nice. I really like them because they've kind of, they're stiff bristled, they're rounded, um, and they're created for stippling like this. So they're created to create texture and, um, they don't get soft in water when, like your uh, hog bristles do. So makes it better. You can use thinner glazes and things like that with them instead of just the thicker paints. So plug for the brush guys there. If you want to find those brushes, I have them down in my recommended list at thebrushguys.com. Thank you for moving that small brush. Why was it in the way? It's blocking the side cam view a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so yeah, there's a link down below the video to the brush guys. 5% off with the code Angel of Fine Art. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and grab my ankle brush here. Now this basket is dry. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of glazing liquid and just a little bit of the dark brown on my tip of my brush here. And I'm going to go in here and just, whoa, got white there somehow. I don't know what happened there. Must have been on my towel, maybe. Hmm. Not sure what happened. Okay, try that again. Let's use this towel. So I can go in here and kind of separate out. I'm just going to kind of run the Color. That's probably Spencer texting us. Somebody didn't mute their phone. I didn't mute my phone. Let me do that really quick. And it wasn't me, so whew, I'm not in trouble. <laughs> oh no, that's just Jordan with the video of the grandbaby. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll watch that while you're... Okay. So just toning that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to use the unbleached titanium and just hit the very top of the lines. So where they're brightest right here, just the very tops of them. Oh, I can hear that baby now. You're just yeah. torturing me. Excuse me. Mm. Not cute at all. He wasn't doing anything adorable or anything like okay. that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. No, no. Okay, so just kind of highlighting. And I'm not doing the ones that are very, very up at the very top under the flowers because those aren't going to be as bright. But just trying to give it a little bit more dimension there in our basket. And I glazed in between the slats to darken those up so it gives them a little bit more rounded look. And now I'm just adding a little bit of the highlight to boost that middle part up a little bit. See how that does? Really fun. And then I'm not going to do the side ones there because those are going to be a little bit farther away. If I don't um, highlight them, they'll kind of stay looking a little bit farther away. I'm going to do these ones, though. 
kind of a, like at the bottom. There we go. And let's do just a little bit on the handle. So just Basket. All right, let's put a little bit of a shadow underneath our. Let me see if I can get some of this shadow color here. I didn't. I forgot. I just handed it to you. So I'm just using watered down paint here and adding it just below the basket and kind of to the side a little bit. This was the blue that we used on our daisies. So the burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. Okay, cute. So now we can go in and I might use a little bit of Burnt sienna and yellow oxide. I'm going to go underneath our daisies there and add a little shadow to the bottom edge of our centers of our daisies. Just add a little shadow there. And I'm going to add a little bit of green because I'm seeing a little bit of green. We use a little bit of yellow with the green to tone it down slightly. I'm going to use that in the centers of some just a few of these. It doesn't have to be all of these, but the ones that are kind of mostly facing us. Just a little bit of green in the center there. All right, that's good. And then finish it off we're just going to use that white and try to get some brighter white here and do one more layer on our daisies here and this time I'm going to kind of um, drag it a little bit so that it it's a little bit of color but doesn't completely cover what we've already done so I'm kind of ending a little bit shorter than I did the first time I'm not going all the way over the top of the center there I'm leaving the centers kind of dark or you know darker I'll give them dimension so just doing the top of the petals And I'm just setting it down and kind of flicking it towards the center to get that color to come off. need to make some of these taller and longer than others so that they're not all like a perfect circle all the way around. You notice our petals are kind of, some of them are kind of hanging out longer than others. So I want to add in a few random petals that are kind of sticking out farther than the rest of them. Make it look a little bit more natural. And some of them are going to look shorter because they're kind of sticking out more straight at us. So if you make these petals kind of shorter like that, it'll make it look like those that some of the petals are coming straight at us. Cute. 
And you notice I'm not always going over the top of what I've already done. Sometimes I'm adding new little new petals to this with the brighter color. So sneaky. Yeah. I'm just going from the outside in to always, I'm never pulling from the inside out because that way I'll get this kind of small tail and short pieces where I want them kind of turning in towards the center of the flower. Wherever you set your brush down first is where it's going to be thickest. Paint's going to be thicker there. I just wanted to say sorry to the uh, Patreon subscribers that joined us Sunday. Why? Because I told them that I would stream live me mowing the yard <coughs> for them. Uh huh. But I didn't. You didn't do that. No. I mean, I was trying to think of some talent I might have that <laughs> they want to watch for a couple hours. Mm hmm. It was pretty exciting. You forgot. Yeah. I could have duct taped the phone to my chest or something while I was walking around, but... Mm-hmm. Well, they do have those GoPros, you know. Get yourself a GoPro. <laughs> there we go. Cute little daisies. <laughs> And I'm going to use my small brush here and a little bit of that really bright yellow now. And just dab it in around the center of my daisies just very sparingly with this color. You don't want to overdo it. Now that was your brush. I just heard a buzz. That's yours. Mine again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody on that group chat are now commenting. Oh, well, yeah. All the grandmas are going bananas over the baby videos. All the grandmas are in the grandmas and great grandmas. I need to get my mom in that one, actually. I don't think she's in that chat. daughter-in-law is good to send us pictures of the baby because none of us live near them so we all have to live vicariously through videos of the grandbaby <laughs> <laughs> oh looks like there's another one i gotta watch here hold on uh oh i'm going in with some yellow oxide with my cadmium yellow medium here centers. Really cute. And now I can do one more. I don't want to. With the small brush. And just do random lines to even brighten up those white, because once those white dry, they do kind of ab almost absorb those colors underneath them or something. They they will kind of dull slightly. So you can kind of punch up the white bright brightness with a just a few lines, and I'm just using a smaller brush. I don't overdo it. I 
there. And then I think I might use... Just a little yellow oxide with a little glazing liquid. And just go on the daisies, on the flowers themselves, the petals, and just add a little bit of shadow. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of like that. So these are the ones that I did it, and these are without it. So and we could use blue. We could use any number of colors, but just something to kind of shadow that center just a little bit. I'm feeling like that it might pick up a little bit of that yellow from the center of the flower. So just, there we go. Just softens that whole look up just a little bit, I think. And then I might go back in just a little darker with the center. Just in a couple of these with a little bit of burnt sienna. And I think we're just about done. Let me do a little I feel like it's a little bit lopsided so because it's slanted that way so I feel like maybe just a low bud or something over here might help pull it back in this direction slightly or either either that or I could put another large one up here but I feel like doing something down here might might accomplish it so just like a little bud of some sort right here And then, there we go. All right, I'm gonna call that good. Let me sign it really quick. And I feel like. Well, what do you use to sign it? Are you gonna brush I'm it? I'm using my Pigma FB Sakura is the brand. Pigma is the kind of the. I don't, I'm trying to think, just a kind of pen in the, the brand. The overall brand is Sakura. Pigma is the kind of pen, and then the FB is the, the tip. So fine black or fine brush, fine brush, FB. Um, I am going to mix up a little bit of this background color here. I feel like this shadow got a little heavy right in here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that background color to kind of go over. And it's okay if it's a little bit darker than our color. I'm just going to soften those edges. That just a little bit. Oops. It's off camera. There we go. Just make sure it's really dark right here. I'm going to sign this one down here. And we're going to call that good. Let's uh, see what it looks like with all of the other ones from the series. So zoom out a little bit there, hun. And that turned out a lot more blue than I realized it was going to, but you're supposed to zoom out. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks. Alrighty, so if we go in order, they were like one, one, two, three, four, like that. So, really cute. People are wanting to know where they're going to be splutterized. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I forgot. But be careful. I got it on my camera. Yeah. So I need to be careful. My splattering is going rogue here. Get these out of the way. So it looks like white and burnt umber. Lattas. Little bit of water mixed with my white on my fan brush here and just tapping lightly. The water, it needs to be watery enough, like a milky consistency. And if you're worried about it not sticking or, you know, uh, you can add a little bit of the glazing liquid to it. 
underbinding, that's the word I'm thinking of, underbinding. All right, there we go. Cute. So that one's very green compared to the rest of these. So probably what I'll do is add a little bit more of the colors in the future ones. Do a few with these grayer, but do do some more with the kind of more colorful grays. I like that. I, I think it's kind of a fun twist. And it makes it, it kind of goes with this one now because it's, it's almost the color of this and this too. So they're all kind of tying together. Hopefully by the end we'll... Uh, we'll have them all kind of, all these different ones that all kind of sort of go together but are, you know, unique in themselves. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be fun. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching with us tonight. And uh, we will be back on Saturday for a llama, mama painting. Can, can you show us one more time the leopard, please? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. From the Patreon bonus video. So the leopard we did in black and white to start with, and then we glazed it. So everything was black and white. And at the very end, we I showed you how to add colored glazes to create this look. Um, so like when we did the lion painting, if you watch the lion, we did it in color. And uh, it was also on the black background, but we painted the fur in with color. And this one, we painted the fur in with grays and whites. And then did the color as glazes over the top. And it gives it a, a much deeper look, I think, um, than just going in with straight color. So it's kind of an interesting way of doing a colored painting too so um it's kind of a fun it's got a technical name grisaille or something like that i'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it but it's a it's a fine art technique that the Grise. masters used huh Grise? maybe i don't, I don't know. know i'm making up stuff i'm not sure oh, okay <laughs> I said it with a French accent. Why do you say, say, say it like you know what you, you're talking about? Have you been married to me very long? That's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so this is available to yeah. the Patreon supporters at the $5 level and above. Right. Right. Go over, check it out. And then if you've signed up for the $10 level, you get access to this Ooh. painting that we're working on. And we're going to be finishing that this week, I think, in the $10 Facebook group. So um, that's also available on Patreon for the $10 level. And be sure that you ask to join the group if you've paid the $10. I have people that pay the $10 and then don't ask to join the group. So um, it's not automatic. Um, you have to request to join it after you've signed up for the $10 level. So be sure you do right. that so that you don't miss out on that, and those when, tutorials. And when you sign up, you get access to all of the past right. tutorials so the, the, the also. The $10 level also gets the leopard and... Um, traceables. So right. five dollar okay. gets traceables. So one dollar for traceables. Five dollars gets bonus video traceables and reference photos. Ten dollar gets the Facebook group plus all of the rest. Going all the way back to February 2017. Right. So it's not just the cheetah video. It's all the bonus videos. All the bonus videos. Yep. And there's several of them. That there's are really a couple dozen. Maybe. Dolphin, we did a couple weeks ago. If you want to see the past ones, um, I have references to those on the Patreon page and some posts, and I also have them mostly, uh, a lot of them are on the, my Instagram page too. So on Instagram, you can see a lot of what we've done in uh, in the Facebook group and on um, in Patreon bonus videos. Patreon and Facebook, yep. Pretty much everything that I do is on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easier to find there because it's all kind of in, you know, uh, gallery form. So it's easy to really kind of scroll through and see everything. So, okay, so see you Saturday for llamas. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to the llama mama. It'll be really cute. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.